the Olympic Games. Great, aren't they? But do you know where the story begins? Well, once upon a time, a long, long time ago. That's right, come on, come on, yes, hurry up. Over here in Greece. Well, ancient Greece to be exact. But do you know exactly where they began? Right here, at the foot of the highest mountain in Greece, Mount Olympus. This is where the very first Olympic Games were held in the ancient world. Now, what are your maths like? Can you work out how long ago the first Games took place? 776 years before the Common Era, Greece was one of the most advanced countries in the world. OK, so the men did wear dresses. They called them togas. And they stood around talking about politics and philosophy and really brainy stuff like that. While the women had to run the household and look after the children and be bossed around by the men. But the ancient Greeks were very clever and hard-working and they invented some fantastically useful and brilliant things. Like central heating. Yes, central heating. Toasty warm in winter. And showers. Very useful in that hot, sticky summer weather. Now, the Chinese say that they invented the wheelbarrow, but the Greeks used them too, and they invented a weapon called the crossbow, made of wood, which they used in battle. And they worked out how to make a crane. Very good for lifting heavy things. But let's get back to the Olympic Games. And you know where the word Olympic comes from, don't you? From Mount Olympus. The ancient Greeks believed that the 12 Olympic gods lived on top of the mountain. So every year they would gather at the foot of Mount Olympus to ask for special favours and to say thank you very much and give presents to the gods. Well, make that sacrifices, that's a better way of saying it. I don't think anyone would call a dead cow a nice present. To lighten the mood a bit after all that bloody sacrificing, they put on contests and competitions which came to be known as the Olympic Games. Now, it's not like today. You couldn't watch the games on TV eating Pringles on the couch. You had to be there. So what games did they play? This is a statue of a Greek sportsman called Disco Bolas by the ancient Greek sculptor Myrus. You might have tried throwing discus yourself, and if you have, you'd be doing exactly what the Greeks did all those years ago at Mount Olympus. Except they weren't wearing Nike or Puma gear. The ancient Greeks competed in the nude. Oh, yes, they did. But why? Well, the weather is pretty hot in Greece, and also because the Olympic Games celebrated the achievements of the human body, and the athletes used olive oil to keep the skin smooth and make their bodies look sleek and muscly. And who could compete in these games? No women, I'm afraid. They were busy looking after the children, of course. You had to be a free man, and not a slave, and you had to be able to speak Greek. What sports did they play? Well, you know about the discus, but things like tennis, hockey, and synchronised swimming hadn't been invented back then. They had chariot racing competitions. They threw the javelin. There was boxing, and there was wrestling, and, of course, there were running races. A bit uncomfortable in the nude, I think. Talking about running, have you heard of the marathon? The very toughest of all running races. Marathon is a town in Greece about 26 miles from Athens. 490 years before the Common Era, there was a huge and fierce battle at Marathon. And the messenger boy, called Phidippides, was given the horrible job of running all the way back to Athens to tell everyone the Greeks had won the battle. He made it all the way to Athens and managed to gasp, The Greeks have won! Before he dropped dead on the ground. That's why the race of 26 miles is still called the Marathon today. It must have been a dramatic moment because it's caught the imagination of painters throughout history. Look at this picture. Phidippides is exhausted. Here's an ancient Greek sportsman looking at his calendar and wondering when the next Olympics will be. Back then, they decided to hold these games once every four years. This four-year period was known by Greeks as an Olympiad. They used it in their diaries and calendars to measure time. So the Olympic Games were held for over a thousand years in ancient Greece until Emperor Theodosius put a stop to them 
Why? Because they weren't Christian, and he wanted to make Christianity the big thing. So in 393 AD, they stopped. Now, let's spin forward more than 1,500 years and take you from Greece all the way to Paris in France. Let's meet the hero of our story, Baron Pierre de Coubertin. He was a rich French nobleman who was very interested in education. When he was a young man, he went to England to visit a boys' school called Rugby. It's fantastic. The sport makes the boys strong. It gives them the discipline and it makes them healthy and happy. It's wonderful. He wanted to go back to the sporty days of the ancient Olympic contests and put on a competition between different countries. But first he had to persuade everyone to agree to his idea. Have you ever tried to persuade people to sell an idea you've got? It's hard. When he told people about his plan, they said, It's crazy! It's ridiculous! It will never work! But he didn't give up. And in 1896, more than 1500 years after the last ancient Greek Games, the first modern Olympic Games was held back in Greece, the country that invented the whole idea. Have you got any idea why the Olympic symbol looks like this? The five rings represent the five continents and the colours are in all the national flags that compete. 